first of all, thank you to Netflix, an unbelievable partnership that started in November of 2023. We had a vision on what could be the biggest fight in history. And on Tuesday, uh, with our partners at Netflix, we'll come out with the results of what tonight looked like. We had a gate of over $18.1 million, a record for the state of Texas, double, double what Canelo did when he fought here the last time post-pandemic when demand for tickets was much higher. And it is the highest gate in boxing history in the U.S. outside of Las Vegas. And it happened with a young man who's four years in the sport and a legend, an icon in Mike Tyson, who came back and you know put on an amazing show. Um, we actually exceeded Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor in terms of commercial establishments that paid to show the fight. So Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, new record holders. And with that, we'll open it up for questions. Hey Jake, Andreas from ESPN. Can you talk about the opening minutes when you see Mike across the ring from you? He's given his peekaboo style, he's coming forward. What were your initial thoughts? Because it seems surreal that you got in the ring with Mike Tyson. Yeah, I was just so prepared. I've gone through the moment so many times in my head and meditation and stuff like that. So it, it didn't phase me. And I just felt at home just because I'm on the path of riding my destiny. And when you're really close to God and, and on the path of your destiny, you just feel everything so much more and you just know what's going to happen ahead of time. Around round three, Mike seemed to be running out of gas a little bit. You were working the jab really well. At any point, did you start to take your foot off the gas just a little bit because you noticed he was tiring out? Yeah, definitely. Definitely a bit. You know, I wanted to give the fans a show, but I didn't want to hurt someone that didn't need to be hurt. Did you feel Mike's power at all? No. He hit you with one, you give him the tongue. <laughs> I Only because the crowd, like, got turned up, but it didn't actually hurt. But, I mean... No one's punches have like really hurt. I, I got buzzed a little bit against Tommy Fury, but that's about it. Tommy Willie. <laughs> Tommy Willie shot. Did it hurt you? It didn't hurt, no. I was just off balance when Woodley hit me, but because I was throwing a check hook and I missed. And then my chin was open and then he hit me and I went, whoa. But it didn't hurt. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Do you feel like it's time for people just to accept you for who you are and not trying to say, hey, you need to fight ranked fighters or fight for a belt or those kinds of things. Just accept what you bring to the sport. Because obviously, look what you did tonight. Yeah, I mean, I think so. But people just love to hate me. I'm easy to hate. And I and I intentionally you know, say things to make people hate me. I play the heel. I feed into that. And you know, that that's just what I like to do. And that's what entertainment is. And at the end of the day, I started as a 17-year-old in Los Angeles in the entertainment business. But I've been in this sport for four and a half years and have been so active doing every event, taking any fight possible. So if people want to see more or this challenge or fight this person, whatever it is, my response to them is just give them a couple more months because I'm going to accomplish more things in just a matter of months. And I plan on doing everything in this sport that there is to be done. But just to be clear, right, he's fought UFC champions. He's fought boxing legends. And he's fought boxers that someone with his experience should fight, and he's knocked them out in the first round, right? He did that twice in a row before Mike Perry. Like, he was fighting in front of 4,000 people last December in Orlando, knocking the dude out in the first round, but doing what traditional boxers do. And now he's here putting on the biggest show that boxing has seen in 40 plus years. You know, there was a fighter who tried to bombard our press conference, former fighter on Thursday, and it was ridiculous. That dude fought somebody that was 9-21 and 21 in their 12th fight. This young man who has four years in the sport, three years with MVP, he just fought the baddest man on the planet in front of 72,000 people on Netflix. And he took it all in and stepped up to the challenge. So to your question about what's next, he's going to do everything that he wants to do to become a world champion. But in the midst of that, we, he may do things that are crossover. He may do things that are smaller in nature. But that's his path to be the world champion. The only people, the only way that people would have been happy is if Jake lost him, right? And that would have been like, oh, what a great fight! Mike, Mike's a legend. <laughs> he knocked out Mike Tyson. It would have been rigged. 
fight went to eight rounds. Oh, they, Mike wasn't trying. Oh, the fight wasn't you know good enough. It, it was an unbelievable display between a 58 year old legend and a 27 year old relatively young boxer. And he actually outboxed the boxer. Jake Paul outboxed Mike Tyson like he said he was going to do. Did you not? Like every Facts. single round. No, and, and <laughs> yeah, and then, like what do people say? Like I told everyone what I was going to do is to give him a boxing lesson. <laughs> Oh, Jerry, are you out of retirement? Can... When, when did I retire? Bro, I haven't seen you in like a year or two years. I'm on the road all the time. I'm traveling. You got to invite me. I miss you, Ali. I miss you too. But first of all, congratulations. A tremendous event. A to Z. One of the best events I've ever been to. Thank now, you. you called out Canelo in the ring. Trevante Davis just posted that he would beat the brakes off of you if you guys fight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be down. Let's run it. Like... I'd be super, super down. Javante, I don't know. Javante, I don't know if Javante needs Jake Paul. Let's be clear, right? Is there a is there a height limit in boxing? <laughs> <laughs> and, and my last question: What about you and Conor McGregor? Are you interested in that? Yeah, he'll never do that though. Why? He knows. He knows way, way, way. One, he's under him. contract. And two, he's not his own boss. And two, he he won't do it. He knows better. He might, he might and it's him. funny to say, like, yo, Conor McGregor is scared of Jake Paul will never box him, but it's it's the fucking truth. And look at him go toe to toe with Nate Diaz, who was easy work for me. It was like a Monday sparring session to beat Nate Diaz's ass. So he doesn't ever want to smoke with me. It won't ever happen. We believe Canelo would do a cruiserweight fight. There's no way Conor does a cruiserweight fight with Jake Paul. Jeremy Hex here with Hip Hop DX and Op Rocks. First of all, I just want to say, I know you get a lot of hate, but what I think you don't get enough credit for is proving to a lot of people that evolution and growth is the ultimate goal and that anything is possible. Like, if you look back at yourself making YouTube videos or vines, to know that you're just boxed the biggest boxing match of all time against potentially the greatest boxer of all time, and you have a belt in front of you and you won, I just want to say that's inspiring to, to a lot of people, so I think you deserve a lot of credit. Um, and then I would love to know, I'm just a big music fan, what, what is on your playlist pre-game? Did you listen to a specific song right before when you were training? Were there a few songs that got you to the point where you're the winner tonight? Yeah, me and my girlfriend were listening to Olivia Rodrigo. Um, and then <laughs> listening to uh, Mr. Saxo Beat was the team's like theme song for, for the training camp. But thank you for your kind words. And yeah, my goal is always to show kids or even if someone's already older that no matter what, in four and a half years, I'm a living proof that you could start something and rise to the top of it just with hard work, commitment, and dedication. Uh, congratulations, man, on, uh, on a good fight. Uh, I spoke to Andre Ward. Steve Gurren, okay, Ward Sports, by the way. Uh, I spoke to Andre Ward afterwards, and he said that he didn't want to come out and say that he thought you you carried Mike, but he he said that he kind of respected that that him live a little bit, you know, that you didn't actually go for for the finish. Would you agree with that? Did did you carry Mike? Yeah, I mean a little bit. Yeah, like I just, there was a point where. You know, I was just like, okay, he's not really engaging back. And so, it, I don't know if he's tired or whatever, and I could just tell that, you know, that his age was showing a little bit, and I just have so much respect for him. And that, like, violence, war thing between us, like, after he slapped me, I wanted to, you know, be aggressive and take him down and knock him out and all that stuff, but that kind of went away as the rounds went on. You want to talk about the last three weeks at all? Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I, I uh, twenty two days ago, I completely sprained my ankle, completely tore the ligament, uh, the anterior ligament, and like contusion snapped the other side of my foot. wasn't Was on crutches for four or five days, um, and it just hindered the end of my training camp. I don't know how it didn't get leaked or anything like that, but um, it just made everything mentally more difficult to go into the ring with a sprained ankle, having to tape it up. And I missed about two weeks of sparring, so I really only sparred one or two times before this fight. And that's why my, my cardio didn't feel as good in there tonight, but 
you just roll with the with the punches and uh, fight through those things. What is your overall thoughts of the fight? I thought in the first round, if there was like 15 seconds left, Katie Taylor was dropped and done. If you look at the replay, she was dazed, didn't know where she was. I thought Katie implemented her game plan well, but it was a dirty fight. She used her head to lead every single minute of every round. And Amanda, you know, did her best to fight back, but she was at a disadvantage and the ref didn't stop the headbutts. He took a, a point away way too late and she continued to do the headbutting, continued to do the holding. Do you want to see the media rematch for this? We want to do whatever Amanda wants to do. She's got to take a little bit of time and, and see what makes sense for her to do next. Have you talked to Amanda and what is her, how does she feel about what happened tonight? She felt that, you know, the ref didn't protect her. The ref didn't put her in a position to win and they should have taken away more than one point for what that woman was doing in the ring tonight. Uh, question for Jake. Um, obviously Amanda coming off a very, very close uh, loss. Did that affect you at all, going out straight off the bat, seeing your kind of training partner or teammate lose? Yeah, you know, it's always a weird feeling in the locker room when that, when that happens, but yeah, I, I feel for Amanda, and I can have a moment, you know, five seconds where I'm like, damn, you know, uh, I'm sending her love and energy, but uh, I, I then have to immediately get back focused. And it's kind of a question for both you and Nafisa. Um, after you break so many records after a major event like this, is it hard to top? Have you already, as Nikisa, have you already got a plan in mind how to break the records again? We always find a way. We always find a way. But yeah, like, just credit to us. You know, there may never be another moment like this in, in boxing. It's rare to come by. But I believe we, we can find something. And I think there are a few names out there that, that make sense that the events could be just as big. Look. Boxing is ebbs and flows, ups and downs, big events, small events, medium-sized events, wins and sometimes losses, right? He lost a year and a half ago, even though he knocked him down, against Tommy Fury. Now, he put on the biggest event boxing has seen in 25 years. So our philosophy is it's not about what is a decision that happens in the ring, it's about the attitude that you have and the product that you create and how you entertain the fans. And there's no more entertaining of an athlete than Jake Paul. Uh, Jake, uh, what are you going to do about the bets with uh, Neeraj and Katie? Are you let them we open? never made it official. I, I think it was all just like in light of entertainment and trying to make some fun and selling fights. <laughs> do you think the fact that so many boxers went with Mike, is that, is that because of the stature he had with him? I would know. I don't care. Like I would have went with Mike too. I love Mike. So. <laughs> I just play a character a lot of times and just to sell fights and shit, so. Well, just a question for, I, I guess, the pizza, but also, Jake, a little bit. Obviously, the numbers on Netflix way probably above what you were expecting, right? Uh, like, a, a massive viewership, and, and obviously, at, at points, it even crashed uh, going into it. What's the, what's the kind of the feeling behind the scenes with, uh, with how much of a success this, this show was on Netflix? Where everyone's ecstatic, everyone at Netflix, like shout out to them, amazing partners, amazing people, couldn't be happier with our partnership and how everything went. It, I think it's six times the numbers that I thought, um, but the numbers are still coming in, so it could be more than that, but. The plan is at some point next week. Bigger than the Super Bowl. Wow. We'll release the numbers next week. There. It crashed, Netflix crashed. Netflix crashed, yeah. But shout out to the Netflix engineers. We love you. They fixed it right away. And yeah, shout out to them. Let's just say a lot more people watch than they watch Floyd Mayweather against Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather against Conor McGregor. Is a lot, 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 lot more people. <laughs> Is it safe to say you smashed that record you were looking at, which was, I think, like the that NFL game on Peacock for the card Smash it. Smash. Smash. Not even close. But we'll put the numbers out on Tuesday. Jake, <clears throat> excuse me, Kevin Garcia with Fight Hype. I just wanted to ask you, Jake, you know, we saw Eddie Hearn celebrate after uh, Katie's victory. Do you accept that as just like human emotion or do you find it off putting as a, you know, a, a, another promoter to see a promoter in the ring celebrate like that, his jubilation after the victory? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. But yeah, man, it's, it's uh, passion. Obviously, every promoter wants their fighter to win.
Thank you. And then same question for you, Nikisa. Yeah, I mean, look, he was, they were, they were, we had a policy that no promoters were coming in the ring for this event. And there was probably like a month of continuous emails through different parts of our team trying to get some extra credentials and to allow Eddie to be in the ring with Katie. But I never heard it from Katie or Katie's team. They not once said to us, we really want Eddie in the ring. So when they continued until today, I finally said, is it what Katie wants? And Katie said, yes, I'd love for Eddie to be in the ring. And immediately I said, absolutely, no problem. How he conducted himself in the ring, that's not how we conduct ourselves, but that's okay. He showed emotion. She won a very close fight. No problem, we move on. Thank you, Nikisa. One more question. No, no, I mean, look, Eddie's been defaming us for the past month and a half. He's a recognized figure in the sport of boxing, right? We're, we're new to boxing. We, we created this company three years ago. He has been saying that this event was a circus. It was bad. We don't care about the sport. That, you know, all it is is about the money. It's a stain on the sport. But he's still coming here and asking us to be in our ring. He's still coming here and sitting in this press conference trying to get the time and the limelight that we bring to bear. It, but we, we have not been focused on his frivolous lawsuit throughout this period, not once. Hey, hey Jake, uh, Jeff Zimmerman, uh, fightnews.com. Congratulations. <laughs> we love the big fights here in Dallas. Keep bringing them back. You, you said you still have the goal of being a world champion, and it seems like you're getting better every fight. What, what does that timeline look like to uh, fight for a title, do you think? Thank you, and um, yeah, I think it could happen in the next 24 months. I truly, truly believe in my skills and, and my ability and, and my power, and the cruiserweight division is seemingly open for, for the taking on that timeline, and I believe that I can become a world champion and do it in within six years of starting to learn how to throw a fucking jab. So. I think it'll be the greatest sports story ever, and I know it's gonna happen. Thank you everybody, we appreciate the support.